lot of you may know what I do. A lot of, a lot of you may know who I am. But uh, I would also like to say there's a backstory to it. And uh, with all the preconceived ideas about how I may look, how I may come, come off, <coughs> I am absolutely different. And uh, to those who know, they know. Prashandai knows now, because uh, I had to rehearse what I had to say. And <laughs> so please act surprised, Prashandai. And cry if you have to. Anyway, so my story starts off um, from when I was very young. I am still young. Um, it's just a beard. <laughs> when I was very young, so it started off from school. Now for us, each and every one of us, especially the parents, we think you have a baby, you take care of them, and then you send them off to school. And so did my parents. So they sent me off to school, and uh, for me, it was just a new experience, as for all of us. But the thing that was a little different for me, a lot of you, a lot of you here present may know and may have experienced this as well, and um, I know a little of how it feels. Uh, how it feels. The thing I went through was uh, I went through a lot of bullying. I did not look like how I look right now. I, yeah, I was young. I didn't have a beard. I was smaller. <laughs> and I was very fat. <laughs> and uh, I say that with a lot of pride. Because, uh, yeah, absolutely. And uh, I've never believed if anybody has, if, I, I've never believed that a person is a person because they look that way. And so, because of my size, even when I was a child, I used to be called names. I have been um, called names by my teachers as well. My name in school was Bogote. Uh, don't laugh. It kind of triggers an anger streak on, no. I'm not going to So that happened, and uh, so school for me was torture. I was never good uh, with education. I was okay in class because you kind of had to pay attention and I used to keep myself on the front row so I could focus on what I was supposed to study, though I never really liked it. And uh, even with that, even during school, I used to get bullied a lot to a point where I thought I could not connect to anybody. And uh, fast forward to 10th grade, where I had been through all of that, I had slowly started to build myself and I grew to a point where I could reason what was going on. And uh, as we all know, that is a point in our life that you have to pass through an iron gate. I had to study a lot and uh, I was forcefully studied. I, f I was forcefully made to study. <laughs> but uh, that's not the thing. The thing that happened during that moment in time was that um, my parents decided to separate. And it's not like an oh kind of thing, because everybody has that. We, I've seen a lot of people who have separated parents, divorced parents. But at that moment, the thing that struck me the most was because through all of my school life, I thought um, I did not need any friends because um, I had slowly started to build myself upon myself and think about only me and myself. And I do not blame myself for doing that. Um, so for me, my friends, my confidant, my, <laughs> my everything were my parents. And uh, when they split, I broke. I thought it was my fault. Because um, I'm not going to go into like gory details. Uh, my mom's going to kill me if I do. <laughs> and so is my dad. Um, so the thing that I want to tell you guys is that with all that happened in life, with, in my life, um, I never retaliated. I never reacted to what came to me as soon as it came to me. I sat and I reasoned it out and uh, made sure that whatever actions that I take has a positive effect on everybody. On me, because we're all um, very selfish beings, human beings. 
Um, so basically what I wanted to share was that we all have preconceived ideas of the next person that you meet. The, um, the girl or the guy that you may see in a microbus or on the street walking, you kind of go like, <laughs> look at her hair, look at this, look at that. I can say that I, will, I, got, I went through that and I've done that. Um, and when that happened, the point in my life where I used to do that was when I went into this little void of mine where I started to blame myself for all the bullying because I thought I was too emotional as a guy. And um, <laughs> sorry, I'm a little nervous <laughs> and it's kind of emotional. So. Um, so what had happened was when that happened, when everything had broken down, I felt that I was nothing because I lost both of my parents, so I thought. Um, I did not have any friends and uh, SLC was on its way. Now, the thing that actually got me here on stage and the reason why Prashandai chose me, thank you very much, was because the gist of this story is what I wanted to share with you guys is at a point in our lives, there's always a moment where you kind of go, hmm, I have the worst life anybody can imagine. And I'm not here being like a, the, the ev I know everything kind of guy. I'm just saying this is something that I've experienced and I'm just trying to share. <laughs> there are different ways to take any kind of situation. And I call it the pink elephant situation. Um, now, if I tell you guys to think about a pink elephant, you guys are all going to have a pink elephant in your mind, true? True? Yeah? Thank you. Because I can't see you guys as it is, so <laughs> I'm like, uh, <laughs> yeah, oh, okay. <laughs> so now, if, and if I say anything else also, you're still going to have like a pink elephant in your head, unless I tell you to think about a blue elephant. Do you guys get the point? It's the same thing, but it's a different kind of way of looking at it. It's a different kind of, it's a different way to look at the situation itself. Because there is always another meaning to it. And that meaning for me was that everything that happens in my life and each and every person that comes into my life is there to teach me something. Maybe, or maybe I am there for that person, for me to teach that person something. Not going like, uh, yo, yo, no. You share your experiences in life. And um, I also wanted to tell you guys that I don't know how many of you are here. Uh, but this is, how many guys, how many people are here right now? Rashandai? <laughs> uh, so you guys are, after the fifth people, Prashandai and all, you guys are the only ones who know my story. Bolla, after eight years. So all of this happened eight years ago. And, uh, no wait, not eight years ago. Yeah, I think so. Anyway, it did. <laughs> and um, so I've never shared this. And the reason why I didn't was because of the profession that I hold. And uh, the reason why people have preconceived ideas about me, of me looking, and looking like an asshole, because I apparently do. <laughs> I kind of do. I realized. My mom told me that. <laughs> I believe my mom. <laughs> and, but... The physical has nothing to do with your mind. Because um, the way I think and the way I reason out things now is very different to how I used to eight years ago. Because for me, I w I'll be very honest, I had my life served on a silver platter because I never, I never had to go through financial uh, problems. Thank you very much, my parents. Um, but then again, when everything happened, I when I said I lost everything, I ran away from my house. So I decided that it was the best idea and uh, I went to Pashupati and I slept for two nights. It was very long. I did not have any money. I tried to hide my face if some of my aunties come and visit because I also live in a Newari family by the way. 
<laughs> Conti was on that. Are you just? <laughs> I didn't want that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so I, I had my own story. And I'm so glad that I am here, chapped, because I'm very nervous, even though I don't see you. Take a breather. Sit down if you have to. Close your eyes and reason out what it is that is going on in your life. Because I'm a strong believer of the universe as well, and I believe that thoughts become things. So if you're going to think about bad things, bad things are only going to come to you. So you, if you want good things, learn to know how to ask for those good things. Feel as though you already have it. And that is exactly what I did. I have what I have still growing. I'm not going to say I'm like the best actor, because I still go around telling people that I'm an aspiring actor and an aspiring model, because that is exactly what I am. I, I haven't made it. And I think I will never do as well, but that is exactly what keeps pushing me ahead to do better and to become better. So, at the end of all of this, um, um, let love be what guides your emotions and your reactions. Because what I believe and what resonates with me the most is that life itself is a compilation of all the reactions that you have made and you have learned from those reactions. And that is it. Let love guide you. Um, scratch that. I would say be an instrument of love. Thank you very much. <laughs>